Welcome to the Heavy Debriefings Podcast. We are Josh Hornquist and the Metal Fairy. A fun-loving metal couple that brings you the best in new music. What did you just make me listen to? As well as movies. Three hours later, nothing of value was added. TV. It's going good, so why not cancel it? Video games. Here's an idea. Remake the game, but make it worse. Wrestling. Why are we still watching this week after week? And all things entertainment. I knew it. I knew she was behind Black Guy Games. And a little insight into our personal lives. You don't mind that I trauma dump on you, do you? Uh, emotional support girlfriend, party one. He's a handsome fella. I know, you keep telling me. We're made for each other, because no one else would have us. Enjoy the show. Hey everybody, this is Josh Runquist here for the Heavy Debriefings Podcast, episode 56, the 13th Anniversary Spectacular. That's right. Uh, yes, uh, as of yesterday when we're recording this, August 2nd, 2024, it is officially 13 years since my very first radio show, cementing my place 13 years ago in the music business. Even if it is a uh, little pea dribble in the ocean of music, I am very (laughs) happy to still be a part of it after all this time and of course that laugh came from the voice of the metal fairy how are you doing i yeah, i'm still waking up <laughs> it's it's been a week but you know what i i am ready to do the show and what a weird thing we went to bed at the same time and we woke up at the same time i know that rarely happens that rarely happens i on the other hand uh am really quite the mixed bag right now yeah um over the past week so many great things happened so many fantastic things Things that uh, I'll be talking about on the show at some point uh, here today. And then also one very tragic thing that kind of snowballed into an atomic bomb on my end. But I'm going to try not to let that ruin the entire show <laughs> because this is the 13th anniversary show. It is. It is. Uh, we, uh, very appropriately for the 13th, you know, being one of the most unlucky numbers, we are doing Accountability 101 with King Diamond and them. Uh, we're also going to be going over the playlist that I had for that very first show uh, to get the Metal Fairy's uh, perspective on all of it. You know, whether she likes the songs, whether she thinks it fits the mood of everything, whether it still represents me. Um, She knows me better than I know myself, so I'm very curious to see what her thoughts are on all of this. And of course, we got all the news, uh, new singles, out today, what I missed, and so much more. But we might as well start things off with what we've been doing over the past week. So how are we starting this off? Good? Bad? However you want to do it. Uh, Let's just get the bad out. Away. Okay, pull the band-aid off. Yeah, that way we can try to focus on good for the rest of the show. Exactly. Well, as I mentioned before, there was a lot of fantastic stuff that happened in my personal life over the past week. Um, a lot of reassurances that I'm doing the right thing with what I'm doing in the music career. Uh, a lot of people that I highly respect that uh, have some weight to their name when it comes to the music business uh, have been reassuring me that uh, I'm doing some good stuff. Um, potentially bring some stuff back. Um, uh, one of the things was uh, I got asked if I if I should start doing some video game reviews. Uh, what did, what do you think of that? I think that'd be great. Like you obviously you know music more than anybody I've ever met, but you also have a lot of knowledge around video games. I mean that's another passion project of yours, not passion project, but <laughs> a passion well, of a yours. Passion. Yeah, a passion of yours. Um, so I think it could be fun to kind of put your your twist out there with things and see see what comes of it. My only concern when it comes to that. Mm-hmm is it's nice to have hobbies. Oh, sure. Absolutely. And gaming is a hobby to me. Yeah. And if I start doing that, then it becomes a business. But when And you... I don't want to, like, become jaded yeah, from yeah. all of it. That's my only concern. Well, when you listen to music, though, I mean, yes, there's the business aspects of it, but you still have moments where you're able to just listen to it and enjoy it, right? Yeah. So maybe even if you talked about it a little bit, it wouldn't be just a straight-up business? Maybe. maybe. Something to think about. Um, also, to go along with that, um, uh, bringing back some of the uh, ranking stuff that I used to do. Yes. Uh, backwards Marathon. Um, what do you think on that? I've always thought those types of videos were fun. Like, y- you and other people, we've watched other people do them too. I think they just they always spur conversation and I love that piece of it. So I, I think it would be cool to see you do more of those. Put more of your, your takes out there and especially getting a take out there because a lot of the other videos we've watched of those variety are definitely stuck in their ways with certain things. 
things. And I, I think you have such a unique perspective because it's it's just an honest, like, not like sucking up to bands of the past type of perspective, you know? So I think it'd be really cool. Yeah, I have no reasons to suck up to bands of the past. Yeah. I have no reasons to suck up to bands of the present or the future either. Mm-hmm. I just like what I like. Exactly. Exactly. And I shouldn't be forced by anybody to feel one way about something. No, not at all. But yeah, all of that good stuff happened. Um, well, I'm getting to the bad because it's all kind of connected here. Sadly, it's all kind of connected. Um, back last Saturday, I talked to my good friend Chris Norris. Uh, you may know him best uh, for his time in Darkest Hour. And especially if you're someone like the Metal Fairy, you know that the first <laughs> time that you see Eric, the song Demons is playing. Yes, uh, in True Blood. In True Blood. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, uh, Darkest Hour has been a part of a lot of different stuff like Tar Hero and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater and stuff like that as well. Uh, he's also been a hired gun for a lot of different tours and stuff like that. And he has a brand new project uh, that'll be coming out and we go into deep, deep stuff about that. Uh, that should be coming out in October and it's almost four hours long. How long did the talk actually take though? Almost six hours. <laughs> So there's almost two hours I had to cut out for legality reasons. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the other stuff is pure gold, including some stuff that you've never heard before about some artists that you may res- you may respect. So good, bad, or otherwise, I think it's well worth the listen. It is the uh, Killers of the Flower Moon of interviews. <laughs> it is almost four hours long. Aww. So, you know, you might want to strap yourself in. That'll be half a day of work if you work an eight-hour shift. Exactly. I think it's worth it. Um, I also... Also interviewed the band The Mantle. Um, my good friend Max Gorlick is uh, the uh, singer, guitarist, songwriter, all that stuff of The Mantle. Um, if you're kind of familiar with him, especially if you were a part of the Mike Portnoy forum back in uh, the 2000, early 2000s, 2010s, yes, it is the son of Kenny G. And uh, he has taken a very different approach than what his dad has done <laughs> uh, from his uh, shortened stint into Imperial Triumphant and then starting The Mantle. Uh, v- very um, guitar shred. Uh, progressive death metal and of course mm-hmm. uh, the brand new album uh, Cosmic Vi- Violent Cosmic Fortune is available now directly through the band we'll be talking about that at the end of the show for the Outwim stuff uh, that was a really cool interview I also got to interview Asher Bank and Sky Moon the uh, other members of the Mantle doing their very first interview if I understand things correctly so that mm-hmm. was pretty cool too Definitely. Uh, then I also got to talk to uh, Tumas of Wolfheart Dawn of Solace Before the Dawn one of the busiest men in uh, Finnish Mellow Death, I would say, <laughs> if not the busiest, um, had one of the most pristine and respectable interviews I think I've ever done. You know, it's just, he is one of the smartest men out there, and he has a way of, like, his voice just makes everything sound even smarter. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> and uh, just getting his per- perspective on stuff. I believe this is like the fourth, third or fourth time I've talked to him. And uh, this interview has been in the works for weeks. And for various reasons, it did not work out. In fact, uh, due to uh, outside influences, he got a hold of me 12 hours before the interview happened, thinking that's when we were going to start. <laughs> uh, right as I was, uh, I-, I-, I woke up from sleep. I just decided, hey, why don't I check my phone? And then right. I saw he messaged me uh, saying that he. <laughs> He was available for the interview and not realizing it would be in 12 hours. <laughs> But, it's like, uh, go time. <laughs> <laughs> and I was about to get out of bed and do the interview before he said that, well, you know, the uh, the original time will work better. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> but no, none of that is the bad stuff. Uh, the bad stuff is that I found out on Thursday, August 1st, that my grandma passed away at the age of 90. I, it could have been old age. It could have been Alzheimer's. I don't know. Um, if you know anything about my Something Gives series, uh, you know uh, my... My relationship with my family is quite turbulent, Mm -hmm. so I don't have all the information as to what happened. I just came across it randomly uh, going through my hometown's obituary. I got a call from somebody uh, that I haven't gotten a call from in many, many years. So that made me think like someone that I knew in my life had died. I was thinking more of like someone that I went to school with or something like that. So I just thought I should head over to the obituary site and uh, it turns out I saw my grandmother. Meaning yeah. I didn't hear anything from my family. Yeah. Now here's the kicker. She had died a week ago when I found out on Thursday. Meaning on Thursday, she died the previous Thursday. And the funeral.
funeral was held two days before I found out. Yeah. I had absolutely no idea. No one told me anything. I just randomly came across it because I got scared about someone else that could have died and turns out it was even deeper than that. As someone who's been around me for the past 11 years and has uh, seen some of the horribleness that is a part of the Runquist name, <laughs> uh, wh what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, if anybody out there has listened to anything in the past, like your struggles and stuff like that, they, they know obviously you've had a lot of issues with your immediate family, but that's never really like um, spread into your more distant family, um, which would be the ones who would have had to let you know in a case like this. So it's just, it's kind of baffling to me, like how they couldn't let you know. Um, and I, I just, my heart goes out to you because I know how much that hurts and like... <sighs> It's, it's taking away that opportunity for you to do, like, grieving in the normal way, you know? Like, you're having to find a different way to come to terms with all the feelings when you should have been notified to begin with. Yeah, I, I think it's a variation. Yeah. And, of course, the last time that I did see my grandma, it was uh, while you were with me, and mm -hmm. I do believe it was the last time I saw uh, my uh, childhood pups, Harley and Russell, at the yes. same time. Yes, a little sweetheart. I did see Russell a little bit after, but it was the last time I saw Harley, and uh, they they were uh, two little Boston Terriers that I had uh, growing up in the latter stages of my childhood. Um, so thinking back on that, it kind of hurts even more. But mm -hmm. All the people from that day, my dad, mm -hmm. my grandma, and my two pups are all gone now. Yeah. That was just like 11 years ago. Ugh. And I didn't really have any problems with my grandma. I mean, we've never fought yeah. like I have in my family. Um, I do believe some outside influences prevented some things from happening without yeah. going into her stuff. Um, I think you know the person that I'm talking about. Yes, I do. Um, but I I just really don't know how to feel right now. I, I don't feel like I get to grieve properly. I just mm -hmm. been hurting. And yeah, um, I, I did mention to you one day whenever you got like a, a free day mm -hmm. and it's not around a holiday, I'd like to go visit her grave. Yeah, definitely. What's going on there. Absolutely. Um, of course, my grandma is buried next to my grandpa. They do have a, a shared plot. Yeah. Or, well, it's two plots, but they have a shared headstone. And I'd like to just see them. definitely and so much of my family is there yeah. right now mm -hmm. too many people yeah. are there but i think it would be a little cathartic if i could see that absolutely i think but, that would be good but um we'll see what happens at the point mm -hmm. um other than that i mean i did mention all the stuff with the uh, new interviews and stuff like that so that i'll be uh, slowly sipping out through heavy debriefings uh when the time comes uh the wolf heart one will be closer to the release date of the new album that is september 6th so i'll be doing it sometime around the end of august early september uh the one with uh, Chris Norris, uh, that'll be out in October when I get go ahead and do that. Um, outside of the legal stuff, or the stuff that I cut up for legality reasons, uh, everything should be there in its truest form, and uh, it is very uncensored. We uh, went into uh, everything from our suicide attempts to uh, trading road stories with uh, different people that we know in the music business to uh, the state of the world, everything in between. And uh, yeah, that four hour interview will be up sometime in October. And the Mantle interview, that is actually available now, because uh, the album just came out on Friday. I released that on Wednesday. So if you want to check out what the son of Kenny G is up to, um, <laughs> when uh, he was chilling at his dad's guest house. Yes, my <laughs> my friends hang out in Kenny G's guest house. <laughs> if you want to check that one out, go to the Heavy Briefings YouTube page. Um, for other side stuff that just involves me, I've just been playing Borderlands 3 because I really truly hate myself. Not because the game is bad. I love the game even though people say it's the worst of the three mainline entries. I disagree. I hate myself because I'm preparing myself for the Borderlands movie that's coming out uh, this coming Friday. <laughs> Although we got something really cool b the day of that uh, we're doing instead, even though we're probably going to see Borderlands probably this weekend or something like that. Hashtag for the content. Yes. Um, we are going to see Rift Tracks live. Yeah. And well, technically it's not live, but it is a it is a screening of a live show that they did a couple weeks ago with one of the most late 80s, early 90 movies you could ever imagine, point blank. <laughs> Patrick Swayze and Keanu Reeves in a surf gang that does crime and it's just a horrible movie and I can't wait for Rift Tracks to do their thing all over top of it. Oh. 
And, and you've never seen Point Blank, right? I haven't, surprisingly, because I'm a or sucker. Or Point Break, sorry, Point, point Break. break. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm kind of a sucker for a lot of those like early 90s action terrible movies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm excited to see it for the first time. Now, are they going to do Gumby again beforehand? Ooh, that's a good question. That's they funny. hate Gumby, but I grew up watching Gumby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah i think that's everything on my end that doesn't involve you so what have mm. you been up to yeah so on my end so i've been watching some olympics because i i love the gymnastics in the olympics and also some um i haven't watched it yet but i like some of the like diving and other events as well so i'm kind of catching up with that stuff my attention span has been just shot this week because yeah, there's just been so much going on well there's been a lot <laughs> in your personal life that's been yeah going on. there's been a lot going and on and having to deal with my crap well <laughs> but um so i haven't gamed a lot like i've been playing a lot of just like random mobile games just kind of quick hit things that i don't have to use my mind for you haven't even been playing skyrim i know i haven't played skyrim in weeks now um but any I did... long-term fan of the podcast yeah should have their jaw dropping right now <laughs> I know, right you have not played skyrim I in like know. three weeks possibly longer yeah yeah um, um, I did play the new episode of Love Island, the game, though. Um, if you listened last week, you will know that we ended the last episode where we were coming back from um, the casa where you go to kind of get try to get swooned by somebody else. And I came back. I decided I was going to stay single and stay loyal to my original, original man back in the main villa. And I come back and they leave you on a scene where he's sitting by another girl. So you're thinking, oh, he chose another girl. That, that jerk. So fast forward to this week's episode right away we find out that he didn't actually pick that girl that girl was with whoever was sitting next to her um he came back solo as well it was this great lovey-dovey moment like okay cool then you go into a game so they have different games you play um like in love island in the actual like tv show as well as on the game where like it could be like truth or dare or like any random competition games you play with other characters and um the two top characters who won the game got to go on a date so it was the person that i was uh partnered up with and the girl who was sitting next to him that we thought was who he had chosen to be with so they go on a date we're thinking it's fine they're loyal to us you know they came back single so of course you know everything's great with us they come back from the game and they're both happy and like he pulls us for a chat and is like you know things went really great on that date we just have so much in common like his mind is being completely turned around and he's like you know like even thinking about our future like do you want to live like where you live or by my family and no matter what you choose like he's like because I you know I was talking with this girl and she like loves the area I'm from and Roman wants to go there anyways whereas you I don't want to force you to move there so I just have a lot to think about you know and just pie on our face pie on our face like you jerk you like come back like you're all like devoted to us and we're having this lovey-dovey moment and now you might be leaving for this other chick so me and every other girl on reddit who plays love island we are just annoyed as can be and we are ready to dump him now and that was the game oh but actually that wasn't the end of the game then like uh later on so there's a hideaway which is basically like a private room you can be selected for with your partner to like spend an evening together and of course they selected me and my partner and i'm like i don't want anything to do with you <laughs> but yeah uh, as i tell you every week you'll find true love one day <laughs> uh, but that's about it for me <laughs> All right. Well, we have done some stuff together. We have. Um, we got our toilet fixed yesterday. I know. After waiting years to get it fixed. Yeah. Well, for parts of it, then other things happened recently too. But yeah, we're uh, it started leaking. Yeah, it was it was pretty terrible to deal with. But yeah. Uh, so uh, all the stuff that's been going on with us, add a leaking toilet on top of that yeah. as well, and like leaking, leaking, like. <laughs> constantly the floor is wet so and not just the toilet water either coming no, out of it it smells like urine out there yeah and that's gonna be fun to try to get the smell out of there yes i'm gonna be cleaning <laughs> but um yeah we did get that fixed it was relatively fast and we should have done that a long freaking time ago yeah yeah but alas we also did some other things yes um in your way of trying to cheer me up you tried to buy me off with food and toys <laughs> <laughs> It was more about the adventure. The buying stuff was for the, uh, a happy anniversary. And what did we do? 
So we had a little venture to some of our favorite comic book stores again because we love our favorite comic book stores. And uh, we found some stuff. We did. Yeah. And you found some. I, well, I found you, you some stuff. You found stuff that I wanted. <laughs> Uh, the very first thing was something you didn't even know existed. Yeah, yeah. So I am a big, big, massive fan of the Underworld movie series. And uh, I, I have found one of their comics, but I'm still looking for more. But you were able to find a action figure of um, Victor from the Underworld series, who I, I looked up all the characters that they have these uh, action figures for. And he's probably one of the least ones I want out of the group, but I want all of them now. <laughs> now that you know that they exist. Do you yes, want them all? Especially Lucian. He is out there somewhere. My How man. Lucian? Uh, they say Lucian in the in the game or in the uh, movie. That sounds weird to me. Like the prescription prescription. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm so excited. I've ne- I didn't know these existed before you found it. And to even get one of them, it's like, okay, this is cool. This is something I need to search for. <laughs> even if it's the one that you want last. Yeah. So everything's going to be uphill from here. That is true. That is true. I mean, Victor's still cool to have. I mean, he's just the mean guy. So the mean father. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I got that. And then I also found a uh, Daria Funko Pop. I'm so excited. I love Daria. She's who I think I am, even though I'm really Tina. And yeah. When you say it like that, you make it sound like Tina's a part of the Daria universe. Oh, no, no. They're separate comic characters or um, animated characters, whatever you want to say. Um, but they have a lot of similarities in a way. Yeah, you still it's didn't just... get it. Uh, Tina Belcher from Bob's Burgers. Oh, is yes. What I was getting at. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I'm so you the meme is so prominent out there i think some people know who it is but, right, but not everybody not everybody you gotta say it like no one knows what you're talking about that is true that is true but i love daria i mean that wasn't all that you got but uh... i did get one comic as well um i am forgetting the name of it though because <laughs> you put me on the spot you weren't gonna mention it <laughs> Oh. Yeah, uh, yes, there was a 80s series, uh, uh, like a B, C grade horror uh, two movie franchise that was kind of like a rip off of House of Wax. Yeah, Waxwork. There yeah, we go. Yeah, Waxwork. <laughs> now I remembered. <laughs> and there was two movies that came out, one in 88, one in 92. Yes, yes. And um, you got the first issue of the comic. I did, I did. Just found that randomly. I know. Between the two stores that we went to yesterday. Yes, yes. And uh, I got some stuff that you bought me off with. You uh, bought you off <laughs> trying to buy me off i did not buy you off uh the first one is a new spawn action figure of course um he's like this western outlaw version of it uh, he's got this mm. uh, giant uh, abraham lincoln hat going on he's got a, <laughs> a gatlin gun going on it's uh, so cool it's it's very very cool we saw him there the last time we went to that store but uh the reason we didn't get it was because the box was in pretty terrible condition yeah and then when we were there yesterday you just came up the brilliant an idea <laughs> why didn't i think of this what did you say why don't you take it out of the box because the box doesn't look that cool anyway <laughs> exactly <laughs> so oh. i just took him out of the box and uh now he's sitting up in the spawn collection right now standing yes. up he's got his gatling gun uh, he's got two little revolvers that uh, do come off of him okay um which i think are cool you can yeah. also put them in his hands too but they also fit in the little gun sides on him and stuff and i think it looks pretty cool uh, i found a couple simpsons comics um i think it was 36 and 38 if i understand things correctly mm. i, I might be wrong on that uh, i'm also on the spot and i'm trying to remember the numbers but it's in yeah. the 30s <laughs> of the original run of the simpsons comics uh two bucks a piece for each one i mean you can't yeah. complain about that exactly and of course the big one is uh of course i got another super seven version of a simpsons action figure yes and there was a lot to choose from there was but i went with duff man yeah it was the heaviest so it felt like it was the most substantial to me <laughs> i think the duff man character is just that uh, perfect uh, 80s mask Scott, that is uh, so annoying it's charming that is true it also has santa's little helper i know there. and he's, he's wearing a little hawaiian shirt it's so cute yeah, basically doing his uh, spuds mckenzie yes. knockoff as yes. well but uh <laughs> I know how much you like him, and I just thought that that would be fun as well. Agreed. But, agreed. um, yeah, Duff Man. Mm-hmm. And then Very I saw cool. there were some other ones that I didn't even know existed as well. Um, not not that I've seen in person at any of the stores that we've been to, but they could be elsewhere. I know they're online and stuff. Mm-hmm. But, um, and also my birthday's coming up as well at age yes. 36. Yes, um, it's around the corner. Level 36 is right around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know what I want for my birthday this year. Yeah. Um, the thing that I say every year is I just want a cure for depression. 
situation. Right. But uh, that's not going to happen. So uh, maybe I can get bought <laughs> off with more Simpsons toys or something else. But um, <laughs> when that 35th birthday spectacular episode happens, we'll let you know what we do. Exactly. And now we're coming into probably the most skip part of the show outside of uh, what we've been doing over the past week. I noticed a lot of people love to skip over the beginning of the show. It's okay. They don't care. They don't care. It is the news. And wow, is it a whirlwind of news this week. It, it's a mix. It's a mix this week. Uh, so first up, not a death, but to some people it is, <laughs> Aerosmith. Uh, they are retiring from touring uh, after Steven Tyler's vocal injury has been deemed not possible to come back from. Um, so the band had previously uh, launched their Peace Out the Farewell Tour back in May of 2023, and then they ended up postponing dates after Tyler had suffered from an injury to his larynx. Um, and they have now put out a statement saying we've seen him struggling despite having the best medical team by his side. Sadly, it is clear that a full recovery from his vocal injury is not possible. We have made a heartbreaking and difficult but necessary decision as a band of brothers to retire from the touring stage. So the rest of the tour is off and doesn't sound like they're going to be ever touring again in the future because his uh, injury is just beyond repair. I've also seen things that a new album is not out of the question, so they might might not be entirely done as a band. Okay, so but maybe... But they will be done doing live shows. Gotcha. Maybe he can do, like, little short bursts of singing, but not, like... Maybe. ...the full-on regimen for a, a tour. As the bigger Aerosmith fan of the two of us, uh, how do you feel about yeah. this? <laughs> I mean, so I enjoyed, like, 80s Aerosmith and early 90s Aerosmith back when I was a child. It, they're not a band I ever kept up with. I didn't really like their older stuff either. And obviously there's been a lot of uh, not great stuff put out there about Steven Tyler and some of the things he's done. Well, and um, things that were just like glaringly obvious. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I'm not, I wouldn't necessarily say I'm a fan anymore. I can listen to some of the songs from my, my era and enjoy once in a while just as like a remembrance, you know. But it's it's hard to support them and it's hard to, like I, I don't really like any of their other stuff anyway. So, yeah, you know. But it's, it, you know, I don't wish bad things upon anybody, but... But, you know, <laughs> that's where I'm at. How about you? Anything else? Well, the only thing I really need to say outside of uh, allegations and um, other stuff that's come to light is one that was glaringly obvious in the late 80s and early 90s. Mm -hmm. But, Dad, I don't want to strip in front of you in a video. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you you want to be a star, don't you? Take it off! <laughs> How did oh. no one see a problem with this? Yeah, I mean... Your yeah. daughter's stripping in front of you and we give Trump so much crap for like all the things that he says about his daughter. Steven Tyler was doing those things. Oh, yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah, never been an Aerosmith fan. Mm -hmm. I, I like the cameo on The Simpsons uh, for Flaming Moe's, but that's oh, sure. really as far as it goes. Yeah. You know, just like with you 2 Hate their music. Oh, completely. But I love that episode that they show up on where Homer gets the <laughs> crap beaten out of him for interrupting a U2 show. He's going to get the help he needs. Yes. In the name <laughs> of love. And he just gets the crap beaten out of him by security. It's, just, it's so hilarious. It's the perfect soundtrack for it. It is. It really is. But uh, that's really all I got. Um, yeah. If you're sad about the Aerosmith stuff, you know, uh, grieve, I guess. But uh, right, right. Uh, I I wasn't going to see the farewell tour. No, I, I wasn't ever going to go see Aerosmith live. So no, there you go. Exactly. Up next, Game Informer is ceasing to exist. So GameStop owned magazine uh, Game Informer announced on Friday that after 33 years of uh, putting out news, reviews, insights from the world of gaming, um, they are ceasing to exist. Uh, so back in 91 is when the outlet first published their ish, uh, first issue under then Minnesota-based retailer Funkoland, uh, which GameStop later acquired in 2000. Um, I keep forgetting Funkoland was from Minnesota. I know, I know. Um, and they grew by 2011. They were, were the third largest magazine in the U.S. to um, put out gaming, you know, content, essentially. Um, the entire Game Informer staff has been laid off, um, That, ad, but it's it stinks because it was as the team was nearly finishing work on the next issue um, but they didn't get to finish that issue because they have all been laid off and also from what I understand the website is gone too which had all the back issues and mm -hmm. so all that history is just gone yeah it's crazy it's it's amazing they couldn't even afford to keep the site up I know I 
I know. Well, and like in the closing days too, when it was still there, but like they weren't in control anymore because everybody had been let off. So they didn't even know who was like controlling it. Mm -hmm. It was very strange, but I mean, I never read Game Informer. I, yeah, I just never kept up with it, but I know a lot of people did. So. Well, I was one of them. Yeah. Mm. Um, I wasn't able to afford every issue or anything like that, but um, sometimes when I was at uh, the grocery store in the next town over, mm. I occasionally saw a Game Informer magazine. I tried to ask for them, ask for it, and if uh, we had enough money, I would get one. Yeah. And you know, it's just like I would learn about all the new uh, reviews, uh, interviews, stuff like that, all the different mm. stuff about uh, gaming at the time. Yeah. When I was a little kid, so absolutely. I mean, I'd be lying if I said I kept up with it in the past 25 years or yeah. so. Yeah, oh, totally. <laughs> you know, it still sucks to see that gone. And even with the website gone, too, you know, it's like seeing all that information gone forever in the digital ether. Yeah. Well, and it, it makes me think a little bit about how, like, news sources in general are changing so much. I mean, newspapers are ceasing to exist and even the online formats of them are harder to maintain too because because it's behind a paywall well that too that too but i mean i think the way people are consuming news is changing so much throughout the years and yeah it's just it's hard to see things change like that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and of course that's not all the gaming news that we have this week nope uh playstation studio bungie known for putting out destiny is laid off uh 220 employees and moving others to the playstation to playstation um citing the increasing costs of development and economic conditions um so like i said 220 roles are eliminated um which is about 17 percent of the company's workforce and then another 155 are being integrated into other departments within Sony Interactive. Um, So these numbers combined with the 100 that were laid off back in October means that Bungie has lost about 40% of its total workforce. Oof. That sounds like a healthy company if you lose 40% of your staff, (laughs) right? 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 (laughs) It's like, oof, what's going on? (laughs) Now, I don't play Destiny 1 or 2 because I'm not an online multiplayer gamer. Yeah. But just this year, there's been so many gaming layoffs and it just freaking sucks to see every single time yeah even if it's stuff that i don't play it's still people losing their jobs still people just trying to figure out what they're going to be doing next Mm -hmm. and so much of it is like brought back to like the cost of um development and all that stuff and economic conditions but it's like i guess i'm just (laughs) I know things are obviously very expensive for like the normal folk in the in the world, but like you're charging even more for games and like especially on games with all the like the microtransactions and stuff like that. Like I just I'm I'm so confused how you're not making enough money to maintain studios. I'm assuming it's on the back end of kind of stuff like uh, upkeep with servers, uh, having the right equipment to be able to make the things that they want to make. Because yeah. you know as soon as the brand new shiniest coolest thing comes out, everyone has to do better than that oh yeah or else the consumer market is like well this doesn't look anywhere near as good as this i'm not gonna play this (laughs) that's true so they constantly have to try to be on the the peak edge of stuff Mm -hmm. unless you're on the indie side where you just make what you want to make that is true that is true (sighs) well moving on to terrible people now oh here we go (laughs) we got a couple terrible people this week of course we do uh so starting off with our favorite puddle of mud vocalist wes scantlin as opposed to what other vocalist Vocalist from Puddle of Mud. That I would know. be our favorite. I know, I know. Um, so he was arrested on Wednesday, July 31st for an outstanding warrant and a new charge of resisting arrest. Um, reportedly, he was pulled over for a traffic violation in Burbank, California. Um, they asked he him. He can if, afford to live in Burbank? Apparently. <laughs> or he was just driving through. Who knows? <laughs> um, he was asked to get out of his car after the police realized that he had a warrant out for his arrest. Um, the musician reportedly refused to get out of his Hummer <laughs> uh, even after a crisis negotiator was called in to negotiate um, the cops were forced to use pepper spray to get him out um, but then the pepper spray didn't even work so they had to call in the SWAT team um, at 4 a.m. and they ended up having to break in his windows and shoot non-lethal pepper balls at him to make him surrender um, they then had to take him to the hospital to clear out his eyes but he wasn't harmed other than that but then of course he was arrested finally what a mess. 
He's never going to get the help he needs, is he? No, no. I like he thinks he needs help. Y- yeah, again, I'll never claim to be a Puddle of Mud fan, but uh, just seeing the turmoil and the downward spiral that he's taking since his heyday in like 2000, 2001. Yeah. It, there's no real words to describe it. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, this is some of the least stuff that he's done in the past. <laughs> And it's still <laughs> horrific. I know. Resisting the SWAT team. <laughs> like, what? I know you can laugh at it, but I, I, I do find it sad. Yeah, I know. It, it is when you actually... But also, it's just, it's baffling. That's probably why you're laughing. Yes, because it's, it's so it's so ridiculous. unexpected. And, yeah. But it's also expected as well when you think about who it is. That is true. That I is mean, true. I mean, all you can really do is hope that he gets the help that he needs, but also at some time you're going to realize that you can't change unless you want to. That is true. That is true. That's true. And finally, uh, Hulk Hogan. Oh, we're we're ending with this. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. So he had recently unveiled his own line of beer called Real American Beer. Um, so he's been going... What an original name. Where did he get that from? I know, right? Um, so he's been going around promoting his beer. And during a recent visit to a grocery store in Boise, Idaho... Of course. <laughs> Of course it is. Uh, he was spotted posing for a picture with a Nazi supporter. Um, the man uh, in question, he had tattoos of the Iron Cross as well as the SS tattoo. Now, I, I understand, like, you're there doing, you know, photos with people, whatever, and they they might be paying for it. I don't know. Even if they're not, like, you might not notice all the tattoos they have on them. But still, like, it's Hulk Hogan, so I feel like even if he had noticed, like, the picture would still be taken. The man was wearing shirtless sleeves. Yes. Like his hero. Yep. And the picture shown, clearly shown, the mm. SS logo and yes. the Iron Cross. Mm -hmm. I refuse to believe that he did not have similar tattoos on his other arm. That that is a fair point. Because Hogan was on the other side, and you can make the argument, it's like, well, how was he supposed to see it? It was all on his right arm, and Hogan was to the left. Mm -hmm. I refuse to believe the guy had nothing on his left arm. Yeah, yeah. And all I could think was, hell yeah, brother. (laughs) (laughs) Gee... Oh. Yeah, um, I also can't say I'm surprised about any of this. Not at all. Especially considering last month he was accused of a firing a social media outlet for finding out that uh, the woman in charge of all of it was African American. Mm-hmm. And he's had and, accusations in the past as well. And, of course, the leak video as well. We're yeah. uh, talking about uh, Brooke's boyfriends and stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's not even alleged. That's out there. Yeah. You can't fake it's that. It's on camera. <laughs> yeah. It was a hidden camera by Bubba Love Sponge, which I find so hilarious. I know. But, uh, uh yeah, especially in these times, uh, you know, with, going back to you watching the Olympics, mm-hmm. it's supposed to be every four years we're supposed to come together. Yeah, yeah. And all we're doing is just being torn apart. Yeah. Every single year. Mm-hmm. Like, we can't even fake it for the Olympics. No, no. We used to be able to fake it. I know. I we know. can't even do that anymore. I know. Ridiculous. Don't be ridiculous. Well, kids, it's finally time to talk about the theme of this week. And if you haven't figured it out by now, it is, of course, supposed to be for the 13th anniversary of when I started this whole thing. Starting off as that drummer guy, now heavy to briefings. Or you could just call me Josh, whatever. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yesterday was 13 years since uh, the very first radio show I ever did. Um, if you don't know the story, I it, it, it came from Facebook. Um, I was, uh, Of course, I've been a huge music fan since I was nine. And, you know, back uh, during the Facebook stuff... Uh, um, in my early 20s, I was posting a lot of uh, different uh, videos and stuff of new singles that were coming out and everything. And the owner of this radio station got a hold of me asking if I wanted to do an hour-long radio show covering rock music. Uh, they called it uh, the very original name of The Rock Block. <laughs> And I said, of course, I'd do that. And not thinking that, hey, I can't talk to people. I've never talked in a microphone like that before. Right. Uh, I would be scared poopless to do such a thing. (laughs) But as I've also learned in life, uh, your first reaction to something is usually the right one. So I went for it. And uh, I did that very first show at the studio. And then I learned how to do it on my own. And I basically did it myself outside of a couple of occasions where I went into the studio. But otherwise, I did it uh, from home basically ever since 
instructions for the radio shows and stuff. Um, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference with the way that I learned how to do stuff, and I'm very thankful I learned how to do those kind of things. And that very first show, I picked out 10 songs, a little under an hour, and last year, well, well, in the last few years, I often keep thinking about that show because I think of the playlist that I put together for that show. And I think even to this day, I think it's a pretty fair representation of me. Mm -hmm. Even if it doesn't give everything away, I think it shows all these different sides of what I enjoy. Some stuff that was a little more mainstream, some stuff that would never be on Top 40 Radio, and everything in between. The reaction to it, some people dug it, but after the show, I was uh, uh, kept aside, and they told me that I needed to start putting in some bands people would actually know. I need to start putting in ACDC and Five Finger Death Punch and all these other things. So, in their words, to get people to pay attention, I, of course, uh, took their notes and shoved it up my own bunghole. <laughs> And just kept doing what I wanted to do because I don't want to promote music I don't care about. And I've been that way since day one. I've been that way through today. And I did 34 episodes on there. And uh, before the station went under, it, I, I didn't get fired. I just, uh, the whole station went under. Mm -hmm. And then I've had various different uh, online radio shows. I've uh, guested on radio shows and podcasts and stuff like that. And of course, in most recent times, it's basically just been me behind the microphone and over the past year I've gotten you to be a part of this somehow yes but um it's where I feel most comfortable I get to control the content that I make the the reviews that I do the interviews that I do um I don't know if I'm ever going to be in a position to do another radio show or online radio show again mm -hmm. uh some of the some of them where I got these offers to do live radio shows I had one listener and that was you yeah and I don't want to go through that again mm -hmm. and of course with YouTube and everything you can't play full songs on here. <laughs> and if I do it just through other means like Spotify and Apple Music and stuff like that, that cuts a lot of the audience out. And I just don't want to deal with that. Yeah. I want to be as widespread as I can while still having my integrity intact. So it's basically just talking about all these things. Yeah. And I'd like to think that I still do an okay job of it. Um, As someone who's been around for 11 of the 13 years, what what, what do you think before we go deep into the theme? Yeah. Um, I won't give everything away, but... I mean, the one thing I love about you is that you've always stuck to your guns with things. Like like you said, from the beginning, you wanted to show what you wanted to show because it's what you loved. You didn't want to push something out there because somebody thought you should or told you to if you didn't like it yourself. You were true to yourself, and I love that about you. And then outside of that, you've grown so much over these 11 years. Well, 13 years, but 11 that I've known you. Um, I remember when I first met you, you were using a, a microphone from a rock band. Yeah. <laughs> and you still made it sound good. You yeah. Still, you did what you It was you a USB to... microphone, mm. so it plugged in right into the computer. Yeah. You, you found ways to make things work and make things up to your standard, regardless of the situation. But throughout the years, you've grown so much. You've become so natural things. And, like, even though the surrounding is a little bit better now, I think you have a better mic now. Like, like. Well, we both have a decent we, mic now. We do. We both have decent mics. Um, you've just, you polished it so well. Like, you're at such an elite standard, I feel like, compared to so many others. Unless you listen to last week's show. I did fix the microphone. You can hear that right now. Yes, yes. Things happen sometimes with technology. That's beyond our control. But, um, you've grown so much. And you're just, everything you do, I feel like, is just amazing. And you are so talented, and I'm so proud of you. Oh, I wouldn't go that far, but I do appreciate the sentiment. Thank you of course. very much. For that. Of course. But then again, over the past week, other people have said basically the same thing that you did as well. It's true. And I'm starting to open my eyes a little bit more to it that, mm. hey, maybe people aren't just trying to humor me. Yeah. Trying to pity me. Maybe they actually mean it. Who knows? <laughs> but uh, with the theme this week, uh, I could have done more of like a retrospective of like favorite interviews, uh, favorite moments, all that different kind of stuff. Stuff, but I thought it would be very interesting because, I mean, let's face it, the real reason you're checking out the show is to get the Metal Fairy's thoughts <laughs> on music. Because if I'm covering it, it means I like it. That does not mean the Metal Fairy likes it. Well, that is true. Because we are two different people and she does not have to like everything that I like and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Although when it comes to like rock and metal and stuff like that, there's very, very little that you listen to that I hate. That is true. Yeah. It We've kind of grown to hate saying things. And isn't that a great thing in a relationship? You you 
learn to watch the same TV shows together. Yes. And you learn to hate the same things. Yeah. That's what keeps a relationship going. It really is. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> So, with that said, I thought it would be very interesting for the Metal Fairy to go back and listen to the songs that I covered on the very first show. If I still had a copy of my very first show, I would have had you listen to that, and I would have had you critique how I was on the microphone. Yes, yes. But that's gone to the digital ether now. But, thanks to things like Spotify, it is very easy for you to check out the 10 songs that I had on the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to be going through this in order of appearance yes uh, so let's get into it let's see what you thought of these songs and right. i'll get your thoughts i'll give my thoughts as well yeah and do you have the list of songs i have the bands but not the songs why did you not write down the songs because i didn't i thought you would have it up and you were gonna list them off so <laughs> never assume i know i know you know what they say when you assume you make an a-hole out of yourself of you and me <laughs> that, that's a reference <laughs> from a movie yes um <laughs> But no, I I have the list. Yes, okay. That hasn't gone away. Well, good. I, I actually had it memorized in my head because, you know, I memorize everything, good and bad. You have a mind like an elephant. Yeah, I never forget. It's true. And I also have the shape of an elephant. Well, trunk. Oh, jeez. The trunk, the... <laughs> the, the, the tail. Whole, the tail, the gray skin, all of it. <laughs> But no, seriously, let's get into it. Uh, the very first song I ever played, and this one was important to me because uh, they were a band that was really, really popular on Minnesota radio. And it's weird because they're a Texas band, but Minnesota was like their base, like their biggest fan base was in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the band Fair to Midland. And uh, I picked the song Whiskey and Ritalin because uh, it started off with like this uh, big drum solo that kind of happens in the beginning. Um, I thought like it was a nice, fun, rockin' track to start something off with where people of the area would know who they are, and it was actually a band I love. And of course, uh, that was off their final album, Arrows and Anchors, which they pretty much imploded after this album came out, which really makes me sad, but uh, I got to see them twice. Both times were absolutely incredible shows, and I still love everything they've done up to this day. Well, up to that day, because again, they imploded after this album. <laughs> uh, but what did you think? Yeah, so for me, their name just pisses me off. <laughs> Why? I, I don't know. It just bothers me. It's just, it's a it, it's a Texan phrase. You know, it's like, hey, how are you doing? Ah, eh, fair to Midland. You know, like fair to medium. That's that's all it is. It just it sounds very Mumford and Sonnish. They were around um, like well before Mumford and Sons, I, despite the fact they don't even sound alike. I understand that, but the name just reminds me of that. But outside of that, see, this is the banter that you come here for. Exactly. <laughs> but outside of that, they were kind of catchy, way more than I thought they were gonna be. So oh, they're a very catchy band. Yeah, yeah. They're incredible. Um, but I do, I do feel like it's very on brand for you. Like you like out there bands. You give any band a chance. Um, not you all say them... it's an out there band, but they were on our local rock station all the time. Fine, I don't remember that, but they sound out there to me. Um, but you're just you're willing to give any band a chance. Not all of them stick around, you know. Some of them don't make it, but you you have such an open heart to music. I really try. Yes, and so I I think this is very on brand for you. I don't hate the bands everyone hates. I don't love the bands everybody seems to love. It just comes down to my own personal opinion, which mm -hmm. I don't need to impress anybody. I'm not going to pretend to like something just to get your friendship. If I don't like something, I don't like it. But I'm also not going to go out of my way to crap on something either. Yeah. Which is the difference. Like, let's say the, the new Bruce Dickinson album. You know, like, of course, a lot of people are going to love it just because it's Bruce Dickinson. Yeah. That holds no weight to me. No. If I don't like the music, I'm <laughs> I'm not going to like it. I'm not going to like it just because... But look at what Bruce Dickinson is still doing in 2024. Yeah, he's not making music that I like. <laughs> But I'm not going to go out of my way to tell you, if you're a Bruce Dickinson fan, how much I hate it. Yeah. I'm going to let you enjoy what you enjoy, because life sucks enough as it is. Exactly. But anyways, still a fair to mill on to this day. Ne next up, uh, we go into what I consider now to be progressive metalcore, but of course, the genre name has stuck around. Despite this band even naming their last album, Gent is not a genre. <laughs> they People still call it Gent, and I did pick 
Periphery off their uh, self-titled debut, and I picked the song All New Materials. Um, it has some of the most clean singing off of that album. There's a little bit of screams that happen in there as well, too, but I also kind of felt like it was the most radio-friendly outside of Jetpacks Was Yes, which um kind of surprised I didn't go with that one in retrospect, but I went with this one because I, well, actually, I did go over this one because of the uh, guitar intro. Mm. I was able to talk over it, like you hear on modern, like, like you hear on radio, <laughs> so it, it had enough time for me to talk about Fair to Midland and go into Periphery. Nice. So that is why I went with it, but I still dug the song. Um, when it comes to Periphery in itself, I still love the first two albums. Everything after that is very miss with a couple hits. And I don't know how familiar you really are with Periphery. So what was your thoughts on this? Yeah, um, I found some parts to be catchy, but I did find it be quite wanky and genty. So it overall not my bag, babe. Um, for you though, I mean you are a prog nerd at your core. It's in your blood. And even though you go in waves with what in the prog world kind of captures you and stuff and what sticks around, it's a part of you. So this totally is also on brand for you. Despite my current facade of being a funeral doom sad F boy. Right. <laughs> I am always going to be a prog nerd. It, it will not leave me. Exactly. But, you know, I tried to pick something there that was like really catchy. Um, Periphery was like really kicking off in 2011. So it was right before before the second album came out in 2012. So, you know, it was my way of like, hey, this band's probably going to be pretty huge. Uh, why don't you check it out? Mm -hmm. uh, next one. Oh, boy, this is funny. Uh, especially when we get to the Metal Fairies thoughts on all of this. It is Clutch uh, off the album Strange Cousins from the West. Uh, it is 50,000 Unstoppable Watts. Uh, this song is basically, I kind of felt like it was a theme for what I was doing because, you know, what, what the name is implying is it's a very small radio station blasting out the hits, blasting out the <laughs> rocket tunes. You know, it took 50,000 watts to get everything out there from the radio towers. I mean, that was that's what the song is basically about. And of course, Neil Fallon's uh, way of his lyrical poetry. But you, MFR, didn't even give this a chance before you started writing things down. <laughs> you found out it was clutch. And then you gave your thoughts. You didn't even listen to the freaking song. So, you know, take everything that she's saying here with a grain of salt because she never gave it a chance. Been your a thoughts. It's been a rough day and I hate freaking Clutch. No, I, I can't stand Clutch. The vocals are like nails on a chalkboard. It is not my band at all. And that's why I didn't invite you to go with me when I mm -hmm. interviewed Orange Goblin opening for Clutch at First Avenue. Exactly. But good for you that you like them. It's still very on brand for you. You, you tend to see good in places that I don't don't a lot of the times. Fine. You're still wrong. And you didn't even give it a chance. You wrote down all your thoughts as the, in, the, in the beginning of it. <laughs> Did his voice change? No, it didn't. It has changed over the years, actually. Well, this sounded like I know him, him to sound like, so. Anyways, let's hope that uh, this next track was a little bit uh, more friendly to your ears. And I'd like to think it is. It is King's X uh, off of the album Dog Man with the self-titled uh, song off of that album Dog Man. I picked this song because I wanted to show a song that is heavy like 90s heavy but also so radio friendly at the same time and I think that's what King's X did for a good amount of time like they knew how to be proggy but they knew how to be commercial they knew how to be heavy at the right times and still be commercial they know how to do more of the classic rock sounds sometimes and still sound commercial despite the fact that the band never really popped off the way that they should they do have one of the most loyal fan bases in the world mm -hmm. and I felt it was my due diligence on my very first show to show off what in 2024 may be my favorite band. What did you think of Dog Man? Yeah, I thoroughly love this. Um, you have opened my eyes to the Church of Doug, and they are one of the many bands that you have helped me discover. Um, I feel like they are more you than any other band. Like you always say that the older you get, the more they kind of inch up on your favorite list. And um, I completely agree. Like they're mellow with just enough edge. They're in touch with their emotions. They're talented AF. And that is you. I've never considered myself to be talented AF, but uh, dead ass. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and everyone left. <laughs> everyone left. Uh, next up, I needed to show off my power metal side here. Um, of course, I picked a very proggy power metal band, but a power metal band nonetheless. I picked Pagan's Mind with, still in 2024, their current album, Heavenly Ecstasy. <laughs> 
Um, I picked the song Eyes of Fire because I think it is one of the catchiest courses in power metal. And I love the album. I love their science fiction feel behind all of it. Just proggy enough, but it has that power metal side to them. Some of the best vocals in power metal. And once you know it, they're the real headliners of prog power coming up in September. They're trying to play it off like Winger is the headliner, but but Pagan's Mind's playing last. They're the headliner. <laughs> they're the reason why you stay to the end. That's what a headliner is. Mm-hmm. But um, as someone who's never really checked out Pagan's Mind before, what, what did you think of this? Yeah, th- I mean, they're a band on the accountability wheel because I suck. Um, Every time I hear them, I enjoy what I hear and I, I it needs to come up on accountability pretty soon. Um, But very on brand for you. Uh, You've been trying to sell me on this band since we met. <laughs> um, this And is- look how well that works. I know, right? <laughs> um, but this is your version of power metal. Like, this is the power metal for you, I feel like, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So true. Uh, next up, I decided to go the heaviest that I possibly could at time. Um, I felt like the middle of the show would wake everybody up. <laughs> and I, I remember uh, hearing some feedback that um, this was way too much for them, but I don't care. Uh, I picked out Trypticon and off of their debut album, Esperatera Diamonds, I picked the song A Thousand Lies, which is the fastest song the band has ever done. Of course, the band is really known for really dark, deep, depressive doom metal, but this song is basically like doom thrash. Like it is, it's almost grindcore compared to what they're, they normally do. But I just wanted to pick like the heaviest song I could possibly think of at time. And it made me happy despite it, especially when you listen to the lyrics, it is dark and depressing. But uh, what, what was your thoughts on this? Yeah, there was definitely some catchy stuff. Um, I've never really given them too much of a chance, despite the fact that we saw them live at Maryland Death Fest. Um, Nine years ago. I know, I know. But I, I know they're a band that's very engraved in you, and uh, I'll forever remember uh, the drive from Maryland Death Fest grounds to the hotel for you to interview them. Oh, You mean was, how we almost died? Yes, it was terrifying. <laughs> yeah, um... I know this might come as a shock to uh, some of the people listening out there. Both of us are white, and we went into downtown Baltimore on accident. Um, This was also during the time of the Baltimore riots. Yes, it was. We made a mistake. <laughs> we, <laughs> well, we, we took, like, I, it, was, it ended up being kind of this back roady, like, through, like, like strange areas. Yeah. Like, yeah. And it's not done in a racist way. It was because of the Baltimore riots and stuff like that, but our kind was not welcome there. <laughs> And somehow we made it out. We did. We did. I'm glad nothing worse came of it. But uh, we ended up at the hotel. I got to interview Tom G. Warrior. Mm-hmm. Had a good friend of mine that came with who I know doesn't listen to the show. But um, uh, he told me I made his life getting to meet his hero, Tom G. Warrior. Aww. But uh, yeah, I wanted to do that for him because I wanted to try to be a good guy and stuff like that. And I know it meant a lot to him. But um, yeah, that was a really good interview and stuff like that. I was really happy to do that. And I will always remember that show. It was it was a really good great set that they did. I met some really good friends because of that set and everything that happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Trypticon is always going to be a part of me. And next year, they have a new album coming out. Finally. After a decade, they finally have a new album coming out. And nice. I can't wait to see what they're going to be up to. Uh, next up is the song that you probably know the best out of all these. Um, after doing something with Trypticon, I had to do something that was also very, very heavy, but also one of the catchiest choruses in extreme metal. I picked Strappy on Lead off the album Mailing. And, and of course I picked the song Love. Mm-hmm. It is, and of course uh, the music video being just a uh, Evil Dead parody, which was fantastic. But, um, you know, it's such a heavy song, but just he swoons you in the middle with the choruses. <laughs> and, you know, Devin is a, a huge part of my life. Uh, some of my friends that I have are because of him. I've gotten to interview him so many times over the years. And his music has always meant something to me, whether it's strapping, whether it's a solo material or whatever. And I want wanted to show that up. and yeah what did you think of this yeah so strapping young lad is definitely my era of devon um these songs and things i like of of other areas but strapping young lad is where it's at for me that's the first thing i ever um experienced from devon and i 
Love it. Why, why don't um, you tell the people how you discovered strapping? Um, well, I, I got the album City. I, I think I had placed an order for some albums and I got like some free albums with it and this one came with it. Um, yeah, but I, I thoroughly loved it. Yeah. Well, that's what I was trying to get at. Like you ordered something else and mm-hmm. Century Media just decided to send you City. Yeah, well, it wasn't Century Media. It was CM Distro. I don't you know. mean Century Media Distro? Oh, is that what it stood for? <laughs> I didn't know that. Uh, 42 years old and still learning every day. Every day. What do you think the CM stood for? I don't know. I didn't. This is before I was like into metal, into metal. I mean, I was into like hair metal and stuff, but like this was on the verge of me like actually discovering other metal. So. And you discovered a lot of stuff on your own. I did. And I did. a previous boyfriend. <laughs> um. <laughs> But yes, yes, that's how I discovered them. And if, uh, looping it back to you, I just, I love how influential Devin is to you. And th- that hasn't wavered over the years at all. Like, well, Zoltoid's I, sitting behind me right now. Me as well. We both have a Zoltoid. Yes, we do. Um, but I, I think that both of you have very similar personalities. And I love that about you. Like, you're both very, very wacky when you're in that fun mood. But then you also both have like this very serious and deep and almost poetic side to you as well and i just love that i I think you were long lost soul brothers potentially Mm -hmm. i mean i can't say i've ever written poetry but no but you just have you're very eloquent when you're like in a deep mood just like he is like um you just have a way of saying things you know Mm -hmm. so going on through uh the track order here after trypticon after strapping i needed to start to lift things up a little bit more because the whole idea that i had for the show was i was gonna start very commercial and slowly get heavier till it reaches the apex and this and everything after that would slowly start to get lighter and lighter more commercial and end on a very soft note Mm -hmm. so next up i have a band that a lot of people do not not know, but I saw them opening for King's X back in 2009, a band known as Orange Sky. And as far as I know, of course I could be wrong, all I have to do is check Metallum to know this, but I do believe they are the only metal band from the band, uh, from the country of Trinidad. Yeah. And they, they get as heavy as Opeth on some songs. They do have some clear King's X influence. And of course they also have that reggae feel going on with their stuff as well. It's a very odd mix of rock, metal, reggae, and other other stuff and I just thought that that'd be such a great way to open people's eyes mm-hmm. to something so I chose the song Alone which is uh, one of the more straightforward songs that they do but it also has like you know some uh, reggae rap that's going on in there they have some reggae percussion going on there as well but the rock hard rock side of it is still like super super catchy to any rock or metal fan and that was my thinking going into it did it work yeah I thought it was very catchy I'm I'll be honest I am not well versed in the side of rap reggae so my my knowledge of reggae bands and such are is very very limited so for me when i listened to it i i thought it sounded like a mix of king's x and snow informer <laughs> that's what i know oh i know but it's it's such an interesting mix and i i really thought it was catchy you know yeah um and looping it back to you like i don't hear you bring them up often well but, we, they were done basically yeah. after this album yeah but i can totally see what the appeal was and why you'd want to put them on here so yeah i will mm-hmm. say it's even better live okay even though i'll never see them live again i'm glad i got the opening set when i did back in 2009 yeah all right old favorites of the show dredge is up next uh, of course <laughs> Uh, the Metal Fairy thinks that there's some kind of hipster band for whatever reason. Um, I picked their biggest song because of course I did. It's the song that they did on Jimmy Kimmel Live. It's the song that got them onto so many tours and stuff. Uh, the song Bug Eyes from Catch Without Arms. Um, their biggest hit. It's their pull me under, if you will. Um, I just thought people might actually enjoy that. And of course, in my stupid, stupid mind, maybe people would go to the local rock stations around and start requesting hearing it. Right. Of course, that didn't happen. <laughs> But I still wanted it to. What did you think? After having already reviewed it this year. Yeah. I mean, like I said, my other review, I've always enjoyed this song. I've always found, always found this song to be catchy. Other stuff of theirs can definitely verge on the hipster side for me. <laughs> you're wrong. You, you, you're just wrong. <laughs> but it is very you. Um, again, you love unique proggy things. So. But this was more mainstream. Than <laughs> Not to my ears. <laughs> <sighs> oh, I tried. I tried. So hard. And then finally, of course, this is a very left of center pick for ending 
ending a show like this, uh, ending on something that is so so hugely acoustic based, black metal in a sense, but also all clean. It was Alcest off their first LP, the title track, Souvenirs de Entremont. Uh, I love Alcest, uh, especially back in the day. Um, they lost me on a few albums um, in stuff that I would consider to be hipster. Mm -hmm. They started incorporating. <laughs> um, you know, kind of like on the new album, uh, you said that it just reminds you of like sitting in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this was off the first album, just that mix of acoustic and post-rock and black metal mixed together into something that was very, very acoustic, clean vocals, and just, it, it, it felt like you were flying in the air with me. Yeah. But, what it, but after seeing them live, after seeing a very special acoustic performance of this, mm -hmm. neither of those two things you give any kind of an F about. Here in 2024, what did you think of this song? Yeah, this song is very nice and mellow. It's just kind of soothing to listen to and I, I do remember seeing this one I, I remembered hearing this one um it doesn't mean you cared but you remembered it well you know um but I found it to be incredibly you it's soft soulful intelligent just like you well thank you you're welcome I'm not French but I I appreciate that that's okay but uh yeah those were the 10 songs that I picked for my very first show that I ever did back with the name that drummer guy that drummer guy's rock block <laughs> uh, <laughs> what'd you think of this um did I pick out some good choices back in 2011? Did I, should I have picked something else? Was the radio station right? Should I have picked more stuff that people would know? Was I stupid for thinking that the average person would want to expand their mind? Let me know. But before we're done, what did you think of it overall? Me? Yeah. I, it's, it is very you. Even to this day, it is very you. I mean, there might be some bands that you'd maybe inter, um, like put in their verses once that burn there now. Um, but overall, I think it captures a lot of what you're about. It captures your love of progress it captures your love of Devin, your love of kind of experimental stuff. Your it's it's pretty well rounded, I feel like, and that that is still you. I mean, you are very well rounded. Like you like all kinds of different things, but you have your favorites too, your core things, and I I, I think that's great about you. You you use that to open other people up to those things as well, because. Surprise, surprise, not all of us are that open-minded going into music. You don't say. But you, you have a way of putting it out there to present it in ways that can attract people in and you drop people into music and I love that about you. Had you not known me. Yes. Had I not forced you to listen to these songs against your will. Yeah. Would you have checked out the show? Yeah. I mean I, I wouldn't have walked away loving all the bands but there are definitely bands from there I, I thoroughly enjoyed. That's all I ask is honesty. Exactly. Alright folks it's time for the favorite segment of the show and that is clearly indicative by all the people who skip to this part. <laughs> it is Accountability 101. If you're not familiar with it The Metal Fairy has been with me for for 11 years and I've tried to show her so many bands and like most people in my life and probably in yours it's all especially if you're a musician hey yeah I'll check that out and then they never do <laughs> So this is me holding the Metal Fairy accountable for all the words and actions that she said that she was going to check out bands over the years. Even bands that she says that she loves, but doesn't dare check out any other albums. <laughs> and wouldn't you know it, that's exactly what we're doing here today with the 1988 album Them by King Diamond. The third release from King Diamond solo right after Abigail in 1987, which is an album that we saw live. Probably your favorite album at least up to that point and how are you gonna try to top Abigail well by releasing probably your best known song welcome home mm -hmm. which you may not know by name but of course you know the grandma <laughs> <laughs> And wow is that apropos to have on the show this week after my grandma died <laughs> having oh. an album where a grandma dies <laughs> Wow, I could oh. not have planned that if I freaking tried. Right, right. That would have hurt me way too much to do. Yeah. But um, since we did Gorgera last week, maybe it's appropriate that, uh, yeah. you know, King Diamond's spirit uh, crushed me to do that this week. <laughs> Of course, the thing to know about King Diamond is he originally started in Merciful Fate, is where most people would know him from, then started doing his own solo stuff. And every single King Diamond release, except for Fatal Portrait, is a concept horror album. So think of those B, C grade horror movies, and King Diamond basically wrote a soundtrack to them with his own original ideas. And of course, that's what happens here with them, probably regarded as the best known King Diamond album because of the song Welcome Home. But 
but this is an album you never checked out. Right. <laughs> despite being a King Diamond fan. I know. Despite King Diamond hanging above our TV. I know. With the uh, Abigail alternate artwork from when we saw King Diamond live. Yeah. A band and an artist who covers horror metal, which should be 100% up your alley. <laughs> As someone who <laughs> enjoys his falsettos. Yes. First, in the words of Backstreet Boys, tell me why. <laughs> tell me why you've never checked out King Diamond on oh, your own accord. I've made some bad decisions, and that's all I can say. That's all I can say. Okay, I see we're not going to be getting a real answer out of this, so why don't we just uh, dive deep into the ball pits of Them <laughs> by King Diamond. Alrighty. Uh, first song, Out of the Asylum. So it's a nice little intro. It definitely sets the mood perfectly. It's like that horror whispering, um, just preparing for what is to come. Um, the second song, Welcome Home. Um, perfect. I mean, it's that horror evil sound to it. King Diamond's vocals are amazing and amazing guitar work throughout as well. It's it's a great song. It's why it's his most highly regarded song. Exactly. Uh, the third song, The Invisible Guests. Amazing. Love this one too. Really love the guitar throughout this one again. Um, it's a little bit more aggressive. Just that aggressive horror sound. Um, for song T, it's a little bit more tame, um, but then it kicks in with that amazing guitar and the screams. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, it's just such a nice balance, I feel like. The fifth song, Mother's Getting Weaker. <laughs> <laughs> Again, really good. I really love the guitar work again through this one. Uh, the sixth song, Bye Bye Missy. Very catchy. Um, this is probably one of my favorites from the album. Um, the seventh song, A Broken Spell. Again, extremely catchy. Um, it has this nice kind of mellow part in the middle, but then, uh, yeah, it's another favorite, I would say, for sure, from this album. Uh, number eight, The Accusation Chair. Um, love this one. This has some really crazy synthy Twilight Zone um, sections, and it's super, super catchy again. Uh, ninth song, Them. Uh, this is an interlude, but it's very beautiful and haunting guitar with kind of a choral vocals over it. And then the music box at the end, I absolutely love. I, I think music box sounds in general are, number one, beautiful, but they're also creepy. That's what got you into Zeal and Ardor before you yeah. checked out. Yeah, I uh, the music box stuff that they did on Devil's yes, Fine. That just draws me in. <laughs> um, the tenth song, Twilight Symphony. Again, so catchy, and this could be my favorite favorite from the from the album. I had a feeling. Yeah, and then finally, number eleven, Coming Home. So the outro, again, very like creepy kind of keys and music box and horror whispery sounds, and just super perfect. Um, overall, though, this. So you didn't check out the bonus track? Mm, no, I didn't. Oh, I didn't. Uh, depending but. on the version that you listen to, uh, there is uh, another little interlude that kind of helps the story out. Uh, phone call. Uh, okay. Well, I will have to check it out. But overall, um, I love it. It it paints this like perfect horror story, um, and it just takes you chapter by chapter uh, with the perfect music to match it. So I really like it. Nice little tidbit here. I was less than a month old when this came out. Really? It came out September thirteenth, nineteen eighty eight. Nice. I was born August nineteenth. 88 so just a little under a week of being a month yeah. old <laughs> So, yeah, overall, mm -hmm. are, you, are you glad that you checked this out? Absolutely. Are you going to check out King Diamond on your own accord? I think I will. Do you mean it this time? <laughs> I I want to. I want to, yes. I think especially once since we're, we're getting closer to the fall season and kind of the Halloween season and all that stuff, I think it's perfect time to dig deeper into him. So. And you'll have to also think of some uh, new themes for the Halloween season as well, because uh, we did cover a lot of ground last year. We did. We did. So we got to do some different stuff. Yeah. As well. Absolutely. But of course, we will also be doing uh, Heavy Debriefing's Most Evil Halloween 13 as Ooh. well, where we'll be picking out our favorite evil tracks of uh, the new year uh, to play for your trick-or-treat and orgies as well. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what do you think of this seminal album? It Does it live up to the hype? Is it overrated? Do you feel Merciful Fate's better? Are you going to go see King Diamond live? Uh, uh, going on tour, it seems like it's going to be for the new album, yeah. even though that's uh, supposedly coming out next 
next year with a Overkill and Night Demon uh, opening. Mm -hmm. um, all of that, I would love to know. Le let us know in the comments down below. But we can't end this without picking out what the band is going to be for next week. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we got 10 entries right now, and of course this is an ever-evolving list. Sometimes there's bands that uh, I feel so stupid for not including in this. Some of them you've completely forgotten about, and everything in between. Yes. Do, do, do. All right. Since you can't reach over here and spin the choice anymore, since you're on your side of the studio. That's true. I'll be doing this for you. Time to spin the wheel. Big round, money. Round and round and round she goes. Where it stops, nobody freaking know. Oh, it is... Ooh. Another Ooh. horror band. Yeah, I'm excited for this. Uh, this is a band that um we actually forgot to bring this up in the news. Um, yeah. the curator from yes. the Dark Anthology series has passed away. Yes, I forgot about that. Oh. And I bring that up because the theme song to the Dark Pictures Anthology series uh, of games um does a cover of Oh Death, the old uh, Irish uh, traditional song. But of course, I am talking about the doomed heavy metal band Chemis. Mm -hmm. And I'm so, so glad that we finally got to this point because I feel like they would be one of your new favorite bands if you actually just gave them the chance. Mm -hmm. And you have liked their stuff in the past. You like their cover of A Conversation with Death. You love their cover of Rainbow in the Dark. Mm -hmm. Yet you never check them out. And I don't understand why. I know. I know. I checked out a little bit when we were going through our um, bracket list. Was it a bracket list? I think for uh, Doom stuff, but... But I need to deep dive. Well, I'm going to give you a little bit of a deep dive here. So I am going to have you check out the 2016 album Hunted. Okay. It It's five tracks. Um, all kind of in the epic lengths. Uh, although the longest song is... 13 and a half. Uh, no song under six and a half minutes, though. Okay. But, um, this was my introduction into the band. Um, it has some of their biggest hits on here as okay. well, and that's pretty much my reasoning for it. I understand. Uh, the album after this, I think you might enjoy a little bit more, but I like having you check out the biggest one because you are that kind of person. That is true. <laughs> so, yeah, next week on the show, the Metal Fairy will be checking out Hunted by Chemis. And if you've stuck around, uh, have you checked out chemists before do you like them hate them feel indifferent let us know all right kids it's now it's time to talk about some brand new music to close out the show of course out today and what i miss will close out the show but we ended this segment to make the metal fairy a little happier because this is more in her wheelhouse checking out singles to see if she would be into the band mm -hmm. basically accountability 101 is to appease me so i can actually talk about albums because i miss talking about albums the metal fairy is not an album girl she is a <laughs> Singles girl, like most people in the world today. So this is my last lingering thread of being able to talk about albums. <laughs> But this segment is to talk about some brand new stuff. Sometimes it's bands we've never checked out before. Sometimes it's long running bands. Sometimes it's bands making a comeback. Sometimes it's bands falling completely on their butt. But, haha, -ha, huh. we have probably too many singles again this week. Yeah. We have so many. And with August and probably into September, that is not going to stop. It's probably not going to let up till October for new singles. But, uh, of course, you'll be hearing plenty of brand new albums for I'll today and what I miss when we get to that point. But yeah, let's get into the singles. What we got first. Yeah, so when we checked out just just before the show, um Oh, we're st we're starting with that. We're gonna start with that, yeah. So Riley's LA Guns. Oh that that one, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um they put out a acoustic version of the LA Guns song The Ballad of Jane. See, I thought we were gonna start with another song that we checked out before the show. Uh, no, that is further down the line. Okay. I think we're ending with that one, actually. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. But yeah, um, I love LA Guns. I love LA Guns, but this was uh, fine. Completely unneeded. Because, I mean, the original is almost acoustic to begin with, so this was just kind of pointless, I felt like. It's filler. It's filler. It's to fill out the new album. Yes. It's how I felt about the Hurricane album from last year? Was that last year? Or was that uh, this year? Maybe this... I can't remember now, honestly. <sighs> See, when you've reviewed 300 albums, th uh, time doesn't mean much That's anymore. True. <laughs> it is true. Um, but yeah, Hurricane did that with I'm On To You. Mm -hmm. They re-recorded it for some freaking reason. Yeah. Then they added other covers and stuff because they didn't have enough original material for mm -hmm. a new album. Despite yep. the fact they put out a new album instead of an EP. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. This oh. it's almost a carbon copy cover of the original. Mm-hmm. It's just without Tracy on guitar and there's no drums. Yeah. That's the only difference. Mm-hmm. Uh up next we checked out Oceans of Slumber put out a cover of Wicked Game originally what? by Chris Isaac. Did you ever watch the Chris Isaac show on Showtime? No, I did not. Oh, I shouldn't have watched it, but I watched it as a kid <laughs> with the uh, naked mermaids and other stuff. It was a very mm. surreal show for the 90s and stuff oh, yeah. when uh, Showtime was uh, much more experimental yeah. besides doing Red Shoe Diaries. Yeah. <laughs> How many ah. memories did I just unlock for you perverts out there? Oh, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, Oceans of Slumber has a new album coming out, and they traditionally do one new cover on every album, Mm -hmm. and they chose Wicked Game, one of the most covered songs in rock and metal, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Um, as someone who has no affiliation with the band, what did you think of this one? Um, I mean, I, I think it was pointless again. They added nothing to the song. Um, I know one thing you mentioned when we were listening to it, and I completely agree. I mean, him already put out the, like, definitive cover of it so there's no really coming down from that or or topping that I should say um and I just I don't know I'm just we talked about this with their last single too like I'm kind of sick of the whole like the the focus is around just being sexy instead of you know talent quality quality and like I feel like that's why this song was chosen too and and, yeah it seems like they're really trying to push the fact that Cammy can be a sex icon yeah in the heavy scene and that's not what I came to the band for. No. Like, they were a progressive doom metal band. Mm-hmm. And now they're doing a song that Tenacious D already covered. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Granted, it's a cover, and that's to me, that's not representative of their original music, which will be on the new album, which I don't know if I'll get an advanced copy or that or not. Um, that's a whole PR thing, but um, whenever I do check it out, I am going to give it a fair shake mm-hmm. and stuff, but it just feels like this album isn't going to be for me Yeah. when all the other ones were, and that's mm-hmm. really disappointing. Definitely. Up next, we checked out Arch Enemy with Dream Stealer. On my end, I hate Alyssa. Like, Why? <sighs> Why do you hate her? Number one, I hate her voice. Number two, I just find her annoying. And like the music is fine with this song, but I I, I can't get past her. You. Yeah, I totally agree. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 100% agree. Um, I found this very, very bland. And I found it more bland than their recent music because it doesn't even have a Jeff Loomis solo because Jeff Loomis isn't in the band anymore. Mm-hmm. So it, you took out the last part of the band that was interesting to me. I have no reason to go check this out. I'm not going to be reviewing the new album because I don't want to make myself suffer listening to something that I'm not going to enjoy. Yeah, totally. Up next, we checked out Tribulation with Tainted Skies. Um, much like the last single i i didn't expect this style from them but i absolutely love it like it's very bloody hammers ghost but black metal version of it and i i find it very very catchy despite the fact that uh they started before both of those bands yes yes yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. i'm just saying it sounds similar i'm not saying they were inspired by them <laughs> i know it doesn't make it any less funny to me but uh okay. yeah the new tribulation it's a little more bluesy because uh of course uh when you get the uh, ex-guitarist of enforcer who made a solo album which was basically a blues rock album that's going to come through in the new tribulation which uh, still blows my mind that he is uh, playing guitar in tribulation going from enforcer to yeah tribulation. that is quite the shift uh, despite them both being swedish bands um yeah it's it's still got some black metal to it but it feels much more like a cult rock to me mm-hmm. which i think really fits the band i mean it doesn't feel like they're trying to follow trends or anything mm-hmm. i think that's very them they they're writing an album that really feels like they've uh, they're covering the ground that they want to cover yeah uh up next we checked out better lovers with a white horse covered in blood i'm just gonna say this uh, ahead of time yeah um uh the band is essentially all the most of the ex-members of every time i die which uh, of course uh, the metal fairy would best kn- know as um uh the butcher in aew mm-hmm. was uh, a main guitarist in every time i die and it also has uh greg pucciato formerly of the Dillinger escape land and they created a super group uh last year they put out a four song EP which was a, a very violent EP uh, much heavier than uh, the new single um, really showed off what I thought that they were all about this new single is a little more mainstream I guess I would say um, it's a lot lighter than the other stuff that they'd done but I enjoyed it unlike some other people who are about to eviscerate it <laughs> 
Yeah. Um, I, I mean, the chorus I found kind of catchy, but the rest I just found completely annoying and attention seeking. And the video, oh, that pissed me off to no end. It's like, we're so wacky. We're going to have bright colors and a man dressed as a frog and destroy stuff. And it just reminded me of like the family guy scene where they have the baby and they constantly push in someone's face like, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. I just can't. You're wrong on every aspect. You're wrong. I disagree. I know you do, but you're wrong. <laughs> Up next, we checked out Undeath with Brandish the Blade. Uh, yes, a uh, New York old school death metal band. I got to interview them for the last album that they put out. Um, yeah, traditional old school death metal. If you love that sound, they're they're doing it in 2024. Mm-hmm. And to me, it sounded like a slightly better local band, but they actually have an audience. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, we checked out Lacuna Coil with Hosting the Shadow featuring Randy Blythe. Of Lamb of God. Mm-hmm. He it's... did not need to be in this song whatsoever. <laughs> no. <laughs> he added nothing to it. Yeah. And I haven't enjoyed Lacuna Coil in 15, 20 years. Yeah. And even then, it was just a couple songs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You? Yeah, completely lackluster filler. Like, yeah, to, to your point, I haven't enjoyed anything Lacuna Coil in years and it's only select songs from back in the day so me up next we checked out jordan rudis with the shadow of the moon oh first off i'm just gonna say the video they specifically showed a logo all the time like a made by lx or i think it's lxe is the name of it it's an ai company that did like all the backgrounds and different stuff for the video Mm -hmm. first of all i'm very disappointed in jordan for using ai like that when he could have gotten someone to actually do that maybe hired on jobs maybe you know create an actual video instead of using ai and being sponsored by it Mm -hmm. second the video it was absolute trash as well like jordan is a hologram and it looks like he's gooning on a couple making love in space <laughs> and third the song was a wankier version of songs that you would hear back in the day on light fm <laughs> Just with more oh. keyboard. And I enjoyed the first single. This one is not for me. You? Yeah, the Cantina band has really changed recently. Um, But yeah, it's Prague in space. Very wanky solo, which obviously that's to be expected, but still not my cup of tea. Um, The video is absolutely ridiculous. Like, just what in the ever loving. Oof. And, yeah. Yes. And then finally, we have Opeth with a single that we don't know what how you're supposed to actually say it so i'm just gonna say s1 because it's like two s's and a one and who knows what it is well it's no yeah. it's two s's on top of each yeah. other well yes yeah mm-hmm. you didn't say that sorry my apologies you make it sound like it's ss1 no 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 no, no. no it's like two s's on top of each other and then a one mm-hmm. if anyone knows what that's supposed to symbolize please tell me i am just a dumb guy from the midwest so i don't know <laughs> what i'm missing right now so if you could please explain that to me um, of course, what is the big fact of this song? Well, I kind of had a, a hankering a hunch, if you will, that the band might be going back to an older sound because I saw their album cover for the new album, uh, Last Well and Testament, coming out in October, and it was black and white. And it kind of looked like the final scene from The Shining with uh, Jack Nicholson just uh, slowly appearing into it. <laughs> it has that kind of feel to it. Of course, you haven't seen it. That's why you hear the Metal Fairies fake laugh. Uh... But the key thing that came with all of this was there's growls back in the band. In the words of Bobby Hill, Dad, the growls are back. (laughs) (laughs) And, well, some people have only heard the growls and think that it's the greatest thing Opeth has done in 25 years. There's other people who uh, hate death growls and think that uh, they have made a terrible decision bringing them back. My honest opinion, which I have yet to give, despite everyone thinking that I have given my opinion, this is the first time I'm actually giving it out loud. It's what they've been doing since 2011, but with growls on top of it. It is the very wanky 60s, 70s prog with some death growls on top of it. And Ian Anderson of Jethro Tull is going to be doing some flute on the album. And apparently the last song on the album, which is a ballad, Joey Tempest of Europe is going to be a part of that. (laughs) Now, before you even tell me what you think of the song, what do you think of Joey Tempest doing an Opeth ballad? It's a head scratcher, but I, that's the, that's the one thing I'm excited for. Because <laughs> I love me some Joey Tempest. <laughs> Despite the fact that uh, he charges half a million dollars to use his song on TV. Yeah. You know what? Get you. Get you some money. Um, <laughs> But no, uh, coming back to the song... 
It's fine. There's nothing about it that grabbed me. I feel like it's aggressive ghost with uh, growls. I mean, Opeth started in 93, but yeah, let's compare them to Ghost who started They can in have a similar 2000s. sound even though they started first. It's not about who started first. I didn't say they were inspired by them. Here we go again. Yeah, here we go again. You're taking the wrong thing from what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, that's what they sound like. I don't hear ghost in it whatsoever, which is why I scoff at it. Okay. Now, before we get into Out Today and what I missed, uh, uh, maybe I'm giving the Metal Fairy a little bit too much of a hard time for, for using newer bands to describe older bands. And I would like to leave it to you down in the comments below. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who is right in this situation? Is the Metal Fairy right in her thoughts? Am I right for scoffing at such an idea? Is it somewhere in between? Please let us know in the comments down below. <laughs> But now it is time for what the Metal Fairy always incorrectly calls Otwim because she forgets the ambersand. It is out today and what I missed for August 2nd, 2024. Uh, picked out 10 songs on here mainly because that would make it a nice even 300 albums I've reviewed this year. And I've done 600 reviews if you count the video versions. And if you include us talking about it on the show, I've done 900 album reviews. Exhausting. It is exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> so however you want to look at it, if you want to look at it as a base 300, you're not wrong. If you want to look at it at 900 different reviews, you're not wrong either. But uh, we're going to start things off with a Rochester, New York band known as Fourth Dominion with Diana's Day. Uh, this is a very post-punk, uh, gothic, new wave of British heavy metal band that wrote an album that is all about dealing with past trauma. I found this to be one of the most cathartic albums I've listened to all year because I feel seen but the music also is great too it has like that great 80s post-punk goth feel behind it with the occasional new wave of British heavy metal guitar and soloing over top of it I think it's a nice little mix but what did you think I really liked it it's like graveyard rock kind of in a way it feels very like Halloween night as a kid mood to it <laughs> so I, I thoroughly enjoyed it yeah their biggest inspirations are anathema and sentenced so mm -hmm. I do see that in yeah. their sound yeah uh, next up is The Mantle which I talked about in the beginning of the show. Uh, if anyone from the band's checking this out, how's it going? Um, of course, uh, this is the brand new album Violent Cosmic Fortune, which is about the uh, creation of the universe and the Big Bang Theory and how all that came together. Uh, the band originally started as an instrumental shredding duo, like very instrumental progressive rock, progressive metal with shredding all over it. This album is a progressive death metal album with a lot of shredding and soloing to it. And I think it was the right direction for them to go into. I'm very excited to see what the band is up to now. I really hope this launches them to where they need to be because I think any progressive death metal fan is doing them a disservice by not checking this one out. Although I will say their next album, they say they're going to be going more into a mellow death route, which has me very, very intrigued. So what about you? Yeah, I'm definitely excited for the mellow death route. I'm curious to hear what that'll sound like. But for this, um, not bad. There's some things I like, but it is a, it is a tinge wanky. Of course it is, but... Remember who is the son of? I know, I know. That's I'm trying to keep that in mind, but obviously Winky is not my usual thing. But there's some good stuff there, though. Right on. Uh, next up is uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bury the lead here. Probably the Metal Fairy's favorite album uh, this week, and I also imagine it's gonna rank very, very high for her for her top end list. It is the self-titled album from Mr. Misery. Uh, this is a combination of like modern metal, metalcore, goth rock. Uh, has a very vampiric atmosphere to all of it, especially imagery wise. And you know, if you hate modern metal stuff like Electric Callboy, you're gonna hate this. Mm -hmm. But if you just fit into that, if you fit into that definition of what this is all about, you're gonna love everything about this. And of course, the Metal Fairy thought. I loved it. I mean, I love me some vampires, but I love the fast paced intensity of it. But then there was these clean, catchy choruses too. And just, hello there, sir. You can suck my blood anytime. You haven't let me suck your blood in 11 years. Next up uh, for brand new stuff. <laughs> Stuff. <laughs> I've never sucked blood. I don't, I'm not a vampire. <laughs> Uh, next up is, um, I'm gonna probably gonna go ahead and say was your least favorite album of the week. <laughs> um, A Day in Venice with A Man Without a Name. Um, this is very goth rock, uh, kind of garage rock also kind of feeling. Uh, it really reminds me of the early day albums of The Gathering, which of course, uh, Annika Van Giersbergen was a part of. Um, yeah, very alternative rock, goth rock, uh, some black metal production. Uh, that's the only 
only thing I wish they would have changed was uh, maybe get rid of the black metal guitar tone. Yeah. But um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it just for some, I, sometimes you need something non-heavy and it fit the mold for me. But my mold is not for everybody, is it? No, it's not. Um, I found it to be boring. Very indie 80s alternative. It reminds me of like what it should have been playing in the record store in Pretty in Pink movie. <laughs> Opposed to all the other pretty and pink things out there. I, you, quit tearing me down. <laughs> Speaking of tearing things down, Category 7 is the next one here. Um, of course, Category 7 is uh, based off tornadoes and hurricanes and trap storms and all that stuff. But this is a brand new, isn't a super group? May, well, it depends on your definition. But, uh, you know, past and present members of Armored Saints, Overkill, Exodus, uh, a lot of different bands here creating 80s thrash metal with some 90s groove metal on top of it. I say the 90s groove metal because, you know, John Bush of Anthrax was a part of Anthrax in the 90s and he really pushed them into the more alternative stuff rather than just doing like full-on thrash with anthrax and i really hear that especially in choruses like uh, the song exhausted which uh really has that 90s anthrax feel to me but the rest of the album does go back and forth between the 80s and 90s thrash and groove if it's for you i don't know but is it for you metal fairy yeah uh some super catchy chorus going on very nice guitar work and john's voice it, it, he, he hasn't missed a beat with it like especially on the chorus there's just this tone to his voice that comes through i absolutely love it yeah now you'll have to hear the rest of it i know, I know. or it'll show up on accountability one day yes <laughs> uh next up is actually a recommendation from uh justin of the harsh vocals podcast check that out if you're looking for things that are much more extreme than what i cover on the show i like to cover extreme stuff but that shows like almost pure extreme metal um it is the band curse upon a prayer with the worship orthoprax satanism and if you couldn't tell by the name this is a literal definition satanic black metal band and unlike other satanic metal bands of the 21st century this one is very very smooth to me very catchy like it feels like a succubus that's like drawing you in then they grab you and brings you down to hell that's what this reminds me of and i think they do it amazingly well but what about you yeah i i liked it there's some really nice melodies over the harshness of it um i think it'd be really good for like a Halloween playlist. Stay tuned. Um, <laughs> but I, I do feel like if I listen to the whole album, it'd be a bit too much. But like, I think in little spurts, it's good. And that's kind of the thing with like extreme metal, especially if that's not your wheelhouse. You can listen to it a little bit before it becomes fatiguing. Yeah. Uh. And next up in the exact opposite of extreme metal, we have Power Wolf <laughs> with Wake Up the Wicked. And why don't we just give our short little description of this album review? Yeah. In three, two, one. Power, Power Wolf Wolf's gone. Power, Power Wolf. Wolf. Yeah, that's all there is to it. Gothic power metal. It's what they do. They mm. don't need to change it. Mm. If you don't like it, it I, I'm, I'm amazed that this is the breaking point for you because it sounds like every <laughs> other Power Wolf album. Exactly. Yeah, but, catchy stuff, but it's it's Power Wolf. Yeah, like you know what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. And, you know, got that from Freedom Call this year. Like, it was going to sound like Freedom Call. Yeah. It doesn't sound different than any other Freedom Call album, mm -mm. but you know what you're getting into. And I think that's been kind of a theme in Power Metal this year. Yeah. It's just like knowing what you're going to get. And sometimes it's nice to have a little consistency in these turbulent times. That is true. All the times it's not. Uh, next up is, I'm going to go ahead and say probably my post-black Black Gaze album of the year. And I don't say that lightly, but this hit me so very, very hard. It is the one-man band from India known as Rot. I think it's Rot because it's R-A-A-T, so, you know, you hold out the A's, which makes it aw. So, Rot with Enchantment. And, yeah, like I said, like, if you love post-black, if you love black A's, this is that to the literal definition. And it doesn't have any of the indie wankery that you'll hear in Deaf Heaven. <laughs> it's just, like, black metal with the more atmospheric moments that go into it and the tremolo picking that you might hear in some post rock but other than that just like a dark voidless schmear of black metal that <laughs> i just love and just hits me to the core what about you i guess i didn't really know how to feel like it's very intense but there's some nice parts to it but it, it gives me kind of like you mentioned the void like it gives me kind of this queasy feeling in my stomach because it is such a void sound you know so well you also heard the song voids embrace oh, which uh, yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> that adds to it. So if anything at all, it lives up to the name. That is true. That is true. Uh, next up is the debut album from Solstium, I think is how you pronounce it, uh, with Morgoth. And I do have to give a shout out to Metal Geeks, who uh, actually tagged the Heavy Debriefing's Facebook page saying they found this band and thanked me for uh, showing this off. Uh, this is a combination of Death Doom, Death Metal, and Epic Metal combined together. So imagine a very strange, unholy mix of November's Doom, Bolt Thrower, and Candle Mass. Sounds so strange on paper, but I think they did it very well in execution. Uh, it has this grand epic feel behind all of it. I mean, especially when you choose something from Lord of the Rings, like Morgoth, it's gonna have that epic feel behind it. But yeah, my kind of Death Doom, my kind of Death Metal, my kind of Epic Metal. What'd you think? Yeah, not bad. Like, I, I, it had some very, like, heavy, like, deep sounding parts, but it had some really nice, kind of moody, clean vocal parts, too. So it was a good mix. All right. And finally, an album that I at least think makes the pedestal this week to use uh, the Olympics yes. here. Um, it is the brand new album from Tears of Tragedy with Wonder Arts. And if you love the band Versailles, this is a band that you need to find out about. Uh, mm. It is that dark, tragic, symphonic power metal that Versailles is known for. Um, of course, uh, Kamio is not singing on here, but uh, definitely has the influences on their sleeve with this one. Um, to the uninformed, it sounds like an anime soundtrack. <laughs> then again, Versailles also sounds like that as well. But um, yeah, just some that symphonic power metal, that melodic power metal in Japanese. Yeah, it's it's wonderful stuff. What about you? Yeah, I really love it. It's super, super catchy and definitely uh, in one of the niches that I love. So, mm -hmm. And there you go, folks. That's all the albums that I covered for Out Today and What I Missed for August 2nd, 2024. What'd you think? Was there some good stuff here? Did I leave out some stuff? I know I left out some stuff because I have stuff all throughout the month that I'll be covering that I haven't been able to get to because it's so much that happened on the last Friday of July and through August. So there's a lot of stuff that I missed out on. So don't you fret. I might be covering it. <laughs> but um, hopefully you discovered something here. And thank you so very, very much for tuning in to the show this week. Episode 56 of the Heavy Debriefings podcast, the 13th anniversary extravaganza. Ooh. Spectacular, whatever you want to call it. It's just the 13th anniversary of when I started my first <laughs> radio show. But um, thank you for sticking around. Uh, listen to the outro to check out where to check out Heavy Debriefings in all its forms. And is there anything else you'd like to say before we close things out? I would just like to say again, number one, congratulations on 13 years. You have grown so significantly over those years, but you've always stuck true to yourself. And I, I love what you put out there. People adore you and adore what you put out there. They see your passion and your just honesty with it and how much you care. And there isn't a lot of that out there in the world today. And it's very refreshing to see. And I love that about you. And so many people out there love that about you. And I hope you can see it yourself sometimes. Time. One day, not this day, but maybe one day. So for the Metal Fairy, this is Josh Runquist for the Heavy Debriefings Podcast saying, embrace the skullet. This has been the Heavy Debriefings Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure to follow Heavy Debriefings on all your favorite social media sites, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and threads. And of course, heavydebriefings.weebly.com for all of your Heavy Debriefings needs. Also check out the Metal Fairy at facebook.com at the Metal F-A-E-R-I-E. Until next time.